Okay, in this segment, I want to give you a background and a little bit of the science associated with molds. We're not going to go too deep, but um, you, you need to have some of the vocabulary that comes with molds so that it is clear to the people that you talk to that you have been trained. So there's innumerable different species of mold, and within each of these species, there's a number of subcategories. For example, one of the uh, molds that you typically find inside homes is going to be aspergillus. This is important in a class like this because it is actually found more often and more commonly inside the home than others and you'll actually usually see larger concentrations of that inside the house than out. By comparison, you also have the Stachybotrys charterum, also sometimes known as Stach or Stachybotrys. Uh, that is commonly understood to be the black mold, but once again, a lot of molds are black. So if you see something that is or perhaps used to be mold, you see that black or the gray color, that may contain some of the stachybotrys. It's probably not all of it. Again, there's probably hundreds of species of molds in whatever you see. But again, the key point is it's mold, and so you treat it like mold. We don't have to necessarily identify whether it's stachybotrys or anything else. Mold is mold, and it needs to be addressed inside the house. I also want to uh, just introduce penicillium to you. Uh, sounds like a word that you've probably heard of before, and yes, uh, penicillium, you might have heard the origin of that, that uh, they had penicillin in a petri dish and it kept some of the other stuff away, and uh, hence the birth of penicillin. Uh, those are the three that we're going to focus on in this particular class. Uh, if there's going to be a problem inside your house, those three will uh, likely be the primary culprits. Now, another thing I want to cover briefly in this segment is the difference between mold, you know, an active mold colony versus some mold history. If you were to have, let's say you go into the basement and you see a hundred dead flies maybe in the corner, or maybe dead spiders or dead mice, you know, if they're dead, it's still gross, but it's not as gross. Uh, the same applies with mold. Mold is a living organism. That, uh, that grows, it eats, it reproduces, and it dies. And uh, that's important because the, uh, the way to eliminate mold is, you know, to, to make it go away is to make it die. And the way you make it die is you eliminate the food source, which for the kinds of molds we're talking about is going to be wet wood, again, or wet something that used to be wood, i.e. paper, cardboard, twigs, leaves, uh, that, that sort of thing. What we're going to want to do, and this is why it's important to eliminate the root cause, root cause being water. And so if we can dry something out, that mold colony is going to go from a active, living, uh, eating, reproducing colony. Uh, it's going to go from that to just being a pile of carcasses. And it is very important because the, the active colony is much more likely to cause problems with breathing and mold spores in the air than uh, just a pile of mold carcasses that indicate that something perhaps a year ago or 20 years ago might have happened at that location. You know, in many cases in my home inspections, I'll see home buyers that we'll see what turns out to be a mold history, and that's actually about 80% of the time, it's a history of mold. And they'll say, oh no, we've got mold, do we need to run? And I, uh, then as the home inspector, it becomes my job to reassure them that uh, this is a history, and what's most important is to make sure that whatever caused that mold colony to happen doesn't happen again. You know, sometimes that was a leaking dishwasher or a leaking disposal. Sometimes it was a roof leak. Sometimes it was drainage issues around the house. And you can usually identify what the source was based on where the mold is. So this becomes a very important concept, one that is not really discussed that much, but it is very important to identify whether you've got a mold colony or a mold history and to follow that up by what was the reason why there was a mold colony in the first place.